Hey, what's up? This is Paul Stolt from Super Easy Apps. In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert a string into a double and some related topics if you are doing any kind of number conversion in Swift. So if you're not sure how to get started, I've got this blog post and this is going to show you how to get started. I want to go through this walk through why it works, how it works, give you a little bit more detail than just a straight coding tutorial. All right, so I've got this playground that we're going to walk through and we're going to talk about numbers. So there's different types of numbers. And when we're working with user in input, so let's say we've got this tip calculator. If you have the user typing in values down here, you're going to have to convert those. And if they are currency formatted, you're going to have to convert those. And so we're going to go over some things. I'm going to show you what works, what doesn't work, and some workarounds when you need to be a little bit more complex. So this is an example down below of working with numbers. Now let's take a look at how that will work when we are actually doing something in code. All right, so we have two different types. We've got the float and the double. One is less precise, one is more precise. And so when I say that, that means that there's less decimal places. So you can store less decimal places with a float. You're gonna have some round off errors with both of these. So they're not the best thing for currency. And I'll get to that later on in this video. Next up, when you're doing any kind of calculations with the user interface, uh, a lot of times you'll have to work with CG floats. If you need to convert this, there is no current version in Swift 4 to convert directly to this. So you actually have to convert to a double so that you can get into a number format and then you can convert that and cast that over to a CG float. All right, so that's used for any kind of view math if you're doing any kind of position. So like if I was positioning this element on the screen, I would have to potentially grab some detail. So if you're, you probably won't be ever doing this or very rarely, but I'll, I'll keep that as an example. Converting strings with integers, uh, that's going to be right here. So if we've got whole numbers, we're going to have different sizes potentially. So most of the time, you're just going to do ints. But if you are working with some kind of database or backend, you might need to specify the actual type. And in that case, you can do that as well. All right, so what doesn't work? So what happens when we don't have a number? If we type alphabet and we try to turn that into a number, it's not a number, so it's not going to work. And so in this example, you're gonna see that that's nil. Now, what I haven't really been explaining is that these types are actually not uh, just ints. They are actually optional integers. So we've got the optional int 64, which is a 64-bit optional value. The same is true with this double. This invalid number is a optional double. That's how we read this little it's a really hard to read, but that says double question mark. It's going to be really tiny on your screen. All right, so that means optional double. And an optional is interesting. In Swift, this is like a big learning curve. And you have an optional to represent either a number or nothing. And so in this case, nothing means nil. Nil means nothing. So when we can't create a number out of something that's a string, then we get nothing. We get nil. And that's how we know if there's an error from user input. So this is really useful when we're working with user input. And in this particular example, like I could type in all these letters down below and they would start causing issues with the parsing. And we wouldn't want that, it wouldn't make sense. And so as an example, here I'm creating a UI object. So I'm creating a text field. You can imagine that this is part of this application. That's the text field down here. And if I set the, the value to a, a real value, and I'm not sure why this says empty image. We can ignore that for now. But uh, I can set this value. And then down in here, we're going to use the if let syntax. So this is called optional binding down below. And what I'm doing is I'm taking the text. And because the type here, if we look at the type, I'll do the alt click. This is an optional string. We actually have to force unwrap this. Now, this one is an exception. This is pretty much what you have to do all the time. So this is safe to do because this is always going to either be an empty string or it's going to be whatever the user typed. So don't worry about that. It looks a little bit gnarly. Just type it. It's going to work. So this if let syntax is going to print something out. And if I show the console right now, we can see that the value is 33.9. If I change this to something like 37.50, we're going to see that this is going to update and it's going to say 37.5. So it's going to cut off that trailing, but that's okay. It's still converted the number. It's it's what we sort of expected. Uh, formatting the number is a whole different story, and I'll, I'll talk more about formatting numbers down below. So uh, keep watching the video, and by down below, I mean in the playground, but you can also download this sample code and, and follow along on the blog post. All right, so what happens if we make this a an invalid thing? So 
if I just uncomment this line with command slash, I can see that it's not a valid number. And so what's happening is before it was executing this chunk of code, and now it's executing this chunk of code. So this if let syntax allows us to process an optional value. So what happens here is this is no longer going to be an optional. When we say if let, we are basically doing optional binding, which is unwrapping the optional if it exists. So if it's not nil, we basically get the full value and we can use that in our code. So you can see down here, I'm using cost and it was printing out when it was valid. So if we comment this back out and we go again, we're gonna see that that is now uh, gonna execute. You, you have to save it or if you press a new line in order to trigger this, so I'll just do a new line and we'll get that to, to rerun and we'll see that the new value is a, a valid number. All right, so that's a little bit about unwrapping. You're gonna do that for the user interface. So that's what I've done in this application to get the, the currency string that the user has typed in. Now I've done a little bit more work because I have to actually convert currency, which we'll talk about shortly. All right, so what happens if we wanna go back the other way? Well, it's very easy. We can just use the string initializer. So before we were using the double initializer, the int initializer, we can use the string initializer to turn a number into a string. So that's a quick way to do it. And you can see over on the right that we now have a string form of that. And so that's what you can display in your text field. We can't display a number directly. We have to wrap it up as a string. So I've gone ahead and I've done that for these top values. I've imported that. And another way is to do string interpolation. Now this allows us to not only parse variables, but also just plain uh, number literals. And so here you can see the syntax is a slash, and then you put your variable on the inside, and we can see that here as well, though it's it's sort of wrapping to the next line. If I make that all fit, you can sort of see how that looks. All right, so, and then if we look at what the output is, we'll see that I had three pairs of running shoes 10 years ago, all right? So just a simple little line that's got some numbers in it, and we can keep on going. So now what I wanna talk about is number formatting. In order to get the display of the tip calculator down below me, I've had to format this for a currency. Now I formatted this just for my current locale, and so that we can get with this information. So uh, a number formatter, this used to be called NS number formatter, and you're gonna see a lot of stuff online. Uh, under the hood, I guess it just sort of translates into that. But in Swift land, we refer to it just as number format, or it comes from Objective C, and we can leverage it here using the Swift APIs. All right. So if you want the US locale, this is the this is the code that you would use instead of that. So that's another option here. And I'll just get rid of those those ticks because those don't really help you when you want to uncomment that line of code. All right, so you can play around with that if you want to switch it to, because if you're not in the US, this won't work for you. So this will work if you're in USA, otherwise you'll have to uncomment this and, and use that style. All right, so for the number style, what I'm gonna do is decimal. Now that's not what I'm doing down below. We're talking about currency down below, but right here, we're gonna be talking about just normal numbers. So uh, a normal number formatted for uh, anything with a grouping separator in America is going to have a comma for the thousand separator. So every three digits, we put a comma. And you're going to see that is going to format the number. Now, the number over on the right is not going to show the formatting. That's just how it displays. Uh, we can customize how it displays later, but that's just how it's going to print out for right now. That's fine. That means it's working. If you got nil there, that means it's not parsing correctly. And so that's what I, I wanna talk a little bit about. If I were to like put a space here and I would ask it to convert this, we're either gonna, looks like that still worked. Uh, if we put like another period here, that's probably gonna be invalid and we'll get nil. So that's, that's the issue that you run into. We use commas here in America for our numbers but there's other locales that we could do this for. So I've created these variables for different locales. I, I have a link in the, the blog post that should show you some additional country codes and sort of language codes. So you can check that out, but we'll go through a couple other examples. So if I wanna format this for French, let's say I'm doing a, a number converter and I need to show different locales all on the same screen. Uh, I would wanna show a conversion of different values. I might wanna show them in different formats, I might not. So it's really up to you. But if you wanna force that, we can switch this over to the French locale and they use a space for their thousand separator and they use a comma for their decimal place. Now that will get translated since my, 
my computer's sort of country code or locale is in America, so I'm in USA, that's going to display in my sort of native language format when it shows up here. And if you're in a different country, it might display differently there as well, depending on the country code that you have set for your Mac. All right, so for German, they use a period and a comma in the sort of reverse of what we do in America. And we can see that that parses correctly. All right, so there is another number. So let's say we're working with these, these values. In the simple case, it's okay to use float and double. But once we're trying to work on something that's going to be accurate, float and double can have round off errors. They can give us invalid decimal places and things when we're doing math calculations, especially if we're doing division or multiplication. So it's really important that we don't use float and double for anything that's really going to ship on the app store because it's not going to be good. It's okay for like a learning example. It's a lot easier. The code's more straightforward. But once we get onto the app store and we're working with currency, it's really important on iOS to use NS decimal number so that we can represent these values completely accurately. And you can also, this is also locale aware, though it does not parse anything with a grouping separator. So you cannot have the grouping separator. And for that, you would want to work with the number formatter. So this is just another option in, in this currency uh, application. Uh, on my course, I, I go through on how to use it with double, and then it's sort of a reader exercise to convert it over to NS decimal number so that it's more accurate. All right. So you can check out that if you want to learn how to actually make this app. If you just go to supereasyapps.com, I've got a little sign up thing that will let you get started with the first lesson. All right. So if we, if we jump down here, what I'm going to show is I'm going to introduce one more example with the English UK and we'll talk about currency. So with currency, we just need to change our number style from decimal to dot currency. Once you do that, you can then just set your locale and you can get those different number formats to parse. And actually what I'm doing here is I'm actually parsing the, the number rather than actually formatting it. So when we do the number from, we can parse it. I have another blog post that you can check out if you just Google how to display currency numbers in Swift. Now, I've recently updated that so that it is now current. And you can go the reverse where you actually get a string from a number. So there's another method for formatter. If you just go, uh, you could say, equals formatter dot, and then there's this string from number. So if we just do this, we could just give it the number, the same number, and this would have to be a currency. So this is actually what I'm using inside the application. So if I do this correctly, we should see that this number gets parsed. And I'm doing this totally wrong. Um, sorry. We need to do this as a number. So let's do 999.99. And this will give us that string. And if we're lucky, then it gets formatted. So that's how we can format it uh, going the reverse direction. So uh, this is if we want to go from a string to a number. This is going to be a number. And this method allows us to go from a number to a string, sort of like I did up top, except this one's formatted. And I actually use this one in this application so that we can get these formatted and displayed correctly. So we do all of our math using real numbers, then we convert back to string for output to the user interface. All right, so we can do the same thing with the French currency. Now, I, I ran into issues where I couldn't actually use the, the spacing. So this would cause it to fail. And I don't know if that's a bug or if that's just not a supported feature. When you set that locale, it should set that. There might be another option that I'm missing here, um, but it works fine for the, the grouping separator for the US locale. So I'm not sure why that is an issue. And I had the same issue with the German currency um, where that wouldn't work. One other side note, you can't have a space. I've seen the, the formatting for the... Uh, this symbol, I've seen this have a space, but that also fails the conversion. So you might have to tweak your code in order to get it to convert properly, or you might have to write some logic if you need to do any of these kinds of conversions from string values. So just keep that in mind. You'll have to, to play around. Just download this playground and you can try those different things, see what works, see what doesn't work, and let me know in the comments down below this video 
or you can reach out paul at supereasyapps.com. All right, so that's just a couple more examples. We can go and and check out this and get the sort of English formatting to actually parse. All right, so I want to do sort of one call out, and I've seen a lot of examples, and my answer on Stack Overflow is right now the top voted answer, and it warns you against doing this one uh, because this has been sort of the proposed solution ever since probably Swift 1.2 through like Swift 2, I think. And now we're on like Swift 4 plus, uh, 4.1 I think just launched. So as Swift continues to evolve, things change a little bit. And that's one of the things that you have to be mindful of. This was sort of a recommended approach from some people. I don't recommend it anymore because it doesn't give you what you would expect all the time. And there's one edge case where this really falls down. So casting your, your string value as n a string and then using double value or int value, that works in the short term as long as you're okay with these two giving you the same result. And so what happens is if this is an invalid thing, there was no concept of optional values in objective C. And so it just returned zero when this was the case. And that's not good because invalid values are now gonna return zero and that might mess up your algorithms. You'll see that if we try to convert this to a double value, that gives us zero as well. Um, so it's a lot safer to, to work with to work with the other methods that I presented. So if we go all the way to the top, the very simple is just to use the, the type cast, okay? So this works for very simple numbers that do not have any kind of currency. It works for anything that uh, doesn't need to be very precise. Like if we're using double and float, those are fine. We might wanna use NS decimal number when we're working with currency as we get ready to ship to the app store. It's It's not, it's gonna be a lot better than using these two, but these are easier. So I would go with easy first. And then we we talked about how to convert ints. There's all kinds of numbers. There's a way more types than I'm gonna talk about in this one, but that sort of gives you an idea. If we give it the wrong one, it's going to be nil. So you have to keep in mind that this will return an optional number. That might be an optional int, that might be an optional double. It's gonna depend on what you're converting from the string. And then you can use this in your user interface. And that's what I'm doing over here on the left. So. That's a little bit about working with this. There's also the formatting. The formatting allows you not only to parse it, which I'm showing how to parse it using different currency codes and different currency locales, but I'm also showing you how to output it. I've got an example here. I've also got another blog post you can check out. I'll have all the links to the both of the blog posts that I mentioned down below, and I hope that this was helpful, and I will catch you in the next video. What I want you to do is like this video if this was helpful. If you want more videos like this, let me know. And I look forward to seeing how I can help you build your iPhone app. So just comment down below if you learned something in this video and let me know what other topics that you want to learn moving forward. All right, so I'll catch you later. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day and enjoy Swift.